The global COVID-19 crisis has led to the widespread closure of schools, disrupting the education of more than 1 billion children worldwide. The rise in domestic abuse amid lockdowns and closure of care institutions have hit the most vulnerable. To understand the impact of confinement on children during this coronavirus crisis, Ortha Van Diesen, the representative of the UNICEF in Kazakhstan, has joined me today. Mr. Van Diesen, thank you for joining me here today. Since the start of the pandemic, we have seen increased domestic violence and abuse reports. Many children are now confined with their abusers and spending their time in dysfunctional families. What does the data suggest globally and here in Kazakhstan? Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Um, it's right that in this uh, period of confinement, often you can see a spike in domestic violence, in child abuse, and we see evidence of that really from around the world. And of course, it's easy to understand why that might be, because uh, suddenly families are in a situation where they are together 24-7 in times of very high stress. Uh, there's a lot of economic stress, so lots of people are worrying about losing their jobs, about what the future will bring. There's a lot of anxiety, um, and this can lead to increased tension, and in, particularly in histories that have a history in families that have a history of violence already, this can lead to spikes in violence and abuse. Now, in a country like Kazakhstan, we don't actually have real-time data on uh, violence against children. Um, but there is some anecdotal evidence to, to say that uh, also in Kazakhstan, there is uh, something happening in terms of violence against children. For example, we know that some of the helplines are seeing a significant increase in the number of calls that they're, that they're getting. So one of the helplines we work with is reporting a 50% increase in calls uh, comparing April to February. We also know that uh, some of the shelters um, are running out of spaces, essentially. So th they see the demand increasing and they are needing to turn people away because there is no space anymore. So definitely there is also something happening in Kazakhstan in this respect. What is the government doing in this regard? And what are the um, NGOs, uh, the volunteers are doing in this regard? Violence against children, unfortunately, is not something that came just with COVID-19. It's something that is a long-standing problem in Kazakhstan and in countries around the world. Kazakhstan is not an exception, of course. Um, what needs to be done is quite a complex uh, set of issues. Some of these issues are long-term measures that need to be taken, and there are some things we can do immediately. Long term, one of the things we need to address is the social norms that allow for violence against children, um, because the acceptance of violence in Kazakhstan is still relatively high. Also, what we need to do, of course, is to strengthen the legislation against uh, violence against children, against child abuse, against domestic violence as well. Um, and we also need to build a system that is better able to detect these cases, to refer survivors of violence, and to make sure that all the, all the relevant services are in place. But many of these things are really long-term um, issues that, that, that need to be taken. And of course, many of us in the UN and also NGOs, etc., and the government itself is taking a lot of steps to make sure that these measures are put in place. But in terms of dealing with this uh, peak in violence that we see during the times of confinement, um, three things I would highlight as important. Uh, first of all, making sure that the helplines that exist continue to be accessible, um, that there are still services and that these services are actually boosted so that uh, children who need it and, and families who need it can access these services. Um, and in addition to that, also making sure that there is psycho psychological support available for families who need it. So in this respect, one of the things that we've been able to do in UNICEF is to work closely with the National Center for Mental Health to make sure that there is um, online psychological support available for parents and for children who are struggling as a result of this crisis of COVID-19. So these are some of the, the short-term measures that we can take. Uh, the Kazakh government has recently announced that the schools, universities, kindergartens will not be open uh, during this academic year. They will remain closed. Uh, most of the educational programs will carry on online into the summer. That means children will still stay in, stay at home. Uh, what would you suggest as the steps to take if a child uh, has found himself in an abusive situation during this time? 
Well, there's always access to helplines. Uh, so there's the famous helpline 150 that is uh, running nationwide and that is always accessible. Um, so the first thing to do is to reach out to someone. The, the worst thing that a child can do is to actually close close down and not to speak to anyone because that is how trauma is built and start, starts growing and, and that's how it starts having an impact way beyond the event that actually has happened. Of course, um, where something has happened that has transgressed, transgressed the boundaries of the law, when something illegal has happened, when abuse has happened, then um, things need to be brought to the attention of the, of the police as well. Um, but I would say the most important thing is to open up and to reach out and to, to find support um, in whatever way you can find it. Kazakhstan is a, is a country that has also struggled for a long time with a high suicide rate among adolescents in particular. Um, and one of the key things is, in our experience, working on adolescent mental health, providing opportunities for children to talk, to share what they've just gone through. And um, shared pain always becomes um, reduced pain in a way. So that's the most important thing. Due to the pandemic, thousands of schools and kindergartens have been shut down. Millions of children have lost access to education. How has the transit to online learning been and what countries and governments are doing in this regard? OK, so turning to, to education, um, I mean, COVID-19 has also sparked a, a global crisis in learning, I would say. Uh, globally, there is more than a billion children who are actually seeing their learning journey disrupted because of COVID-19 and all the measures that had to be taken to curb the spread of the coronavirus. That's something of unprecedented scale. It's, it's something we haven't seen before. In Kazakhstan, we have approximately four and a half million children who are now learning, um, who are impacted by this and, and learning from home mostly. And the government of Kazakhstan really has uh, taken a lot of measures to make sure that there is continuity of learning. And we're really appreciative of all the measures that have been taken. And it's been a combination of online learning, um, but also um, remote learning through radio and TV, for example. And we shouldn't forget that there are actually still two and a half thousand small rural schools, multi-graded schools, that continue to actually teach in the school. Um, so these efforts are great, but of course, it's not an easy journey. Um, and what we worry about as UNICEF is particularly um, the continuity of learning for those children who are more vulnerable. Think, for example, of children with disabilities. It's much harder for them to learn remotely because they need specific assistance that may not be available. And also, they may not have uh, the right technology to actually benefit from, from remote learning. Think also about uh, children with learning difficulties who may need spe special assistance in their learning. They can't necessarily benefit. Think also of children in institutions, uh, children who are in migration, who are not in their place of origin. All these children are in need of specific attention. Um, in order to ensure the continuity of learning and, and kind of the, the proper conclusion of this school year, Agencies like UNICEF and UNESCO and the World Bank are supporting the Ministry of Education and, and Science. And we have very much focused on these uh, rural multi-graded schools, the, the two and a half th thousand that are still um, in operation. Um, and we are actually um, providing webinars for all these schools to ensure that they can continue to function safely um, and end this school year in a proper manner. Throughout Kazakhstan, there's really uneven access to technology and the internet. How can parents, schools and educators be proactive in ensuring that children still have access to education? Well, that's a very good point, I think. And um, we've seen that as well in the experience here in Kazakhstan. But in the early days uh, of quarantine, I think um, many of us in the Ministry of Education, many of us were thinking that really online learning was the way to go. And then quickly we, we ran into some bottlenecks in terms of the existing bandwidth, the fact that many families have no in internet access or may have slow internet access, or you may have four children and only one device through which to access lessons. So clearly that wasn't working. So very rapidly the Ministry actually made some changes. Um, to make it possible for everyone to continue learning. 
But what it's um, highlighted for me is actually the importance of investing further in uh, connectivity in Kazakhstan and in, in bridging that digital divide that even in a country like Kazakhstan still exists to an extent. And it made one of our earlier initiatives even more relevant. We are actually globally um, pushing forward an initiative which is called GIGA. Um, and the GIGA initiative is aiming, it's very ambitious, it's aiming to connect every single school in the world to broadband internet and to connect every single learner to meaningful digital learning opportunities. Um, and earlier this year, before this crisis started, we actually reached an agreement with the government of Kazakhstan um, for, the, for Kazakhstan to be um, a leader in this initiative for the Central Asia region. With the online learning actually gaining momentum at the moment, um, that also means that many children are spending a lot more time online. Tell us about some of the risks of children having access to online content. So what should parents be aware of? Yeah, great question. Um, the internet, of course, is a fantastic resource for learning, um, and we should embrace it as that. But we also know that it is a dangerous place, uh, and it has dark corners that, that are best avoided. So when children spend much more time online, the risk of them getting exposed to material that is not appropriate for their age um, or illegal material um, is much greater. There's also a risk of cyberbullying. Bullying happens in the real world. It continues online as well. Um, plus, there is outright child abuse happening as well, uh, child grooming, etc. All these things are out there. So what's really important for parents is to be aware of children's online behavior. Um, so be with your child and understand what their behavior actually is online and build that relationship of trust with your children so that they actually, uh, when they come across content that they find awkward or it embarrasses them or it makes them feel anxious or, or fearful, that they feel uh, able to come to you to actually explain uh, what has happened and that you can then advise them on what steps to take. So that's, I think, the most important thing. Educate your children also on the boundaries of online behavior. What is acceptable and what is not acceptable online? Um, so that they know, again, to, to draw that boundary and, and uh, when they're exposed to that kind of content, to come and seek for help or to simply browse away from whatever side they are looking at. And when you want to um, curtail children's time online, don't simply set limits, but actually give them uh, opportunities to engage in other things and make them enthusiastic about things that you can do together. Um, and this is one of the, the blessings, I think, of this quarantine period, that we all spend so much more time with our children than we normally would. Children in Kazakhstan have been confined at home for more than eight weeks now. Um, they have very limited access um, to the outdoor activities. They don't have any in-person contact with their peers. Um, what are some of the mental and physical health implications of this confinement? I worry most um, about the psychological impact uh, because it's a big shock to children, right? Their normal routine is upset. Going to school, going to play sports, uh, spending time with your friends, all these things are no longer possible and it's a big shock to the system. And at the same time, um, children are also exposed, of course, to news. They hear their parents talking, um, so they pick up the worries of the people around them. They hear about disease, they hear about numbers of deaths in various parts of the world. And of course it makes children anxious as well. Um, so it's really important to pay specific attention to children's psychological needs in this time. We've actually put a, a number of resources up um, on the internet, they're available in Russian and Kazakh as well, as to how to speak um, to your children about this crisis that the world is living through at the moment um, and how to guide your children through that. Um, another initiative we have is that there is a, a fairy tale, actually, uh, it's called You Are My Hero. It's a fairy tale about COVID-19, specifically aimed at, at explaining to children what is happening um, and um, how they should perceive all this, this new reality around them. That fairy tale is also available um, in Kazakh language already. So spend time with your children, understand uh, their fears, speak very openly uh, to them, um, acknowledge the fears that may be feeling and help them find a way to, um, to be resilient in this crisis. Uh, the UNICEF has launched a volunteer project during the COVID-19 pandemic to fight the pandemic, to help people cope with the crisis. Tell us more about the project. 
Yes, and this is one of the aspects of our program uh, in response to COVID-19 that perhaps I'm most excited about because um, it brings so much energy and so much innovation to our program. Um, so this to, uh, 2020 is actually the year of volunteers, as you know. Um, so we had started our volunteering initiative well before COVID-19, but when this pandemic uh, reached Kazakhstan as well, we decided to introduce the concept of online volunteering. Um, so we now have more than a thousand volunteers. Uh, they're not all children. They, they range, uh, range in age from um, about 14 to about 40 years of age. Um, and they are engaging others online um, on issues such as how to say stay, stay safe in this time of uh, COVID-19. Um, also in identifying fake news and countering myths that are out there, because unfortunately with this pandemic also came an epidemic of misinformation. So they help us to spot fake news and to counter it. And also providing um, young people with um, tips, with support on how to stay healthy, how to stay safe in these times. Uh, we started that in early April and just in the first month, um, the volunteers, these uh, 1000 plus volunteers, managed to reach a quarter of a million other people online. So it's going incredibly fast. Um, and um, they're mostly young people um, who come with a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, lots of new ideas. So if you look at the social media reach, it's really quite something. There's so much creativity there. It, it gives me a lot of energy as well and hope for the future, in fact. There's a lot that the society can do to ensure children's uh, well-being, but it's ultimately up to the parents. Uh, what is your message to the parents? Use this, this opportunity. I think it's much more clear now than ever before that as parents we need to be involved in the lives of, of our children throughout, right? And when everything is normal, uh, if we can still talk of a normal, um, we're so busy with our jobs and we're busy worrying about finances and busy meeting friends, etc., that sometimes um, children come at the very uh, end of our priority list in a way. Um, and uh, this period, I think, has, has shown us how much we gain from direct involvement um, in our children's lives. Um, so invest, in, invest that time, use that time with your children wisely. And I appeal particularly, of course, to fathers because, um, again, Kazakhstan is no exception, but um, father's involvement in uh, the raising of children is less than it ought to be in Kazakhstan. So hopefully we're seeing some change as a result of this unusual period we're living through together. I have to too. Thank you so much. Thank you.